This might be TMI, but you asked. Hey folks, it's Mary, AKA Mercy Triumphs, and this is Slow Crochet. Today I am answering the questions that I asked you to ask me in celebration of hitting some YouTube milestones. So these questions come from the comment box of that podcasty episode. I'll link that original episode in the video description and you can go back and reference these questions. I will be paraphrasing them a little bit, but I'll try to put the original commenter's name in the box below as I speak. But let's get into it. Um, I know that I can be a little long-winded, so I will try to keep things brief, but also answer the questions thoroughly. So I'm sure I'll have fun editing this. <laughs> All right, question number one, I have my list here from Elizabeth Lane. What is your skincare routine? And she was very complimentary of my skin. So this question made me laugh because you might not like the answer. Um, number one, I've never worn makeup. Um, number two, when I was 17, I started using moisturizer. Number three, I live in a very humid climate. So all of those things kind of have combined to help my skin stay the way it is. In terms of actual skincare, three or four times a week, I will do just a basic straight out of the box baking soda as a scrub. I'll use a kind of generic, organic-ish, but not crazy expensive, like drugstore cleanser. I'll only use that three or four times a week. And then in between washings, um, in the mornings or in the evenings, I just get some bottled witch hazel, some like a distillation of witch hazel, put that in a little spray bottle and spritz my face. And then in the morning, I use a moisturizer with SPF. So those things together, there's no specific brand, there's no real magic to it. I think most of it is just from the things that I did from an early age and just never wanting to put a lot of stuff on my face. So. Um, I do own some lipstick that I will put on for a fancy dinner, but that doesn't happen very often. And other than that, I guess it's just lighting and the fact that cameras are not the same as seeing someone in person. So thank you again for your compliments, Miss Elizabeth Lane, and I hope that that I answered your question. Next question from GDR619. They ask about my medieval England poster here in the background. Um, do I have a particular interest in medieval English history? So my husband and I are bona fide nerds and a lot of fantasy draws inspiration from the medieval period. So that's one kind of point of reference. There's also a couple of YouTube channels that I enjoy watching that focus on history. They're kind of newer channels and I really like them. One of them is called History Calling. I'll have that linked below. And the other one is, I believe the YouTuber's name is Alan Barton, but I can't remember his channel name. I'll have that link below as well. Both of these kind of focus on different parts of history, but a lot of it is British history. Miss Helen over at the Mousy Makes podcast, I think also does a wonderful job of showing just the things that she's interested in. She and her husband will go on different camper van trips and they'll always take in whatever kind of historical sites there are. So I love watching that and learning from that and experiencing that through her eyes as well. Two other things related specifically to the medieval period. Number one, when I was at university, I did take an art history class that was part of another degree that I was working on, but it was art history focusing on the Middle Ages. And so that is one of the things that really introduced me not only to things like the Book of Kells, but also to the Lindisfarne Gospels. And it was a time in history where the church was the center of culture, the, cent the center of art. And so you have these artists that may not ever be known, but their work continues because they did it to bring glory to God. That really resonates with me and my philosophy of why I crochet, maybe theology of why I crochet even. <laughs> All right, the other component is that before the Civil War in the United States, different populations settled different parts of the United States. And so there's a book by Dr. Grady McWhiney, and it's called Cracker Culture, which is Celtic Folkways and the Old South. And that is a book that I read and it seems really compelling. He uses a lot of primary sources in talking about how the South, which is where I live, was populated by a lot of Celtic peoples. So your Scots, your Irish, your Welsh, 
and how a lot of that culture was maintained in the South. And then he goes on to make somewhat of a point, a point that a big component of the Civil War was a culture war because the North was settled more from the English, the Dutch, the German, those kind of different civilizations. And so when the Civil War came up, it was almost another iteration of the English trying to take over the Scots, for example. So because of that, it kind of plays into this medieval history, which is why I have it represented on the map behind me. There you go, that was, that was definitely TMI. <laughs> All right, my friend, Miss Jana Kay over at Flourish Faith Fiber. She asks, have I always lived in Tennessee and do I homeschool my kids? Answer is yes and yes, except for several months that I was in England. I think it has to be about eight generations or more of Tennesseans, but yes, definitely a Tennessean my whole life. Absolutely love this state. It is gorgeous. And yes, I do homeschool my children. It wasn't something I ever really intended to do, but I do have a background in education and my children were starting to enter into school age around the pandemic. And so I realized they're probably gonna be home most of the year anyway, because every time you just cough or sneeze, it's like, you're home for two weeks. So <laughs> I thought, let's just be consistent and homeschool. And that's how I kind of fell into it. I'm a little bit of a reluctant homeschooler, but I see so much value in what I'm able to do and I wouldn't trade it for anything. So it's definitely not easy. A lot of times not fun, but there's a lot of joy in homeschooling because I know it's what I'm meant to be doing in this season. Cassandra from Craftably Ever After asked, if I had to move to another country, which country would that be and why? I love that Cassandra asked this question because it seems like it would be something that really hits home for her. She and her family are living abroad right now. This took a little bit of thought. My first thought was New Zealand, <laughs> but then we have friends from New Zealand and they say that it's way too hot here. So I thought, mm, probably would be a bit too cold for me. Um, I also thought about England or anywhere in the UK, maybe Scotland. But then I thought that's probably also too cold. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, we gotta do, we gotta go with Japan. What I love about Japan, well, many things, um, obviously food, culture, history, natural beauty, the climate. I don't mind getting sweaty hot. Um, and I understand that the summers can be quite hot in Japan. It's also the land that invented amigurumi. It's also the home of Noro yarn and the concept of taking something old and honoring it and not worrying about it being fresh and new and perfect, but that things tell a story with age and you can honor that. So love a lot of those different philosophies. But beyond that, recently I've just been growing in compassion for people in Japan. Um, number one, just looking at the international birth rates and understanding that Japan's population has been declining because of birth rates. So, you know, it would be very sad for such a beautiful culture to be lost. Another component is really how the Japanese culture kind of parallels in some ways the culture of the South before and after war. So as I understand it, and I am no expert by any means, but as I understand it, it's a collectivistic culture. It's about clans, it's about honor. There's a beautiful kind of warrior mentality there. And there's a lot of pride in that. And after World War II, a lot of that had to go away. And so there's been this cultural shift and this wrestling with identity that I think parallels what happened in the South after the Civil War. We had this kind of Celtic culture that is tribal and collectivistic and not even very uh, focused on material goods as much as it is about enjoying life. It's also a very honor-driven culture and there's a lot of kind of warrior mentality, a, a lot of kind of dueling and things of, of that nature. But in Reconstruction, a lot of folks from the North came down and it was almost like a forced acculturation. And I think that that has happened to a degree in Japan since after World War II, a lot of their rights in terms of standing armies and things of that nature were dissipated. And then they've had to adapt and overcome and kind of create a new cultural identity. That parallel really tugs at my heartstrings. And I feel like that, as different as it might seem, um, I think we actually have a lot in common. And so my heart would be, how can I go and 
love these people well and encourage and support and make a difference in people's lives. Despite what we see in the West and we kind of have this idealized image of what Japan is like, thanks to the internet, we're also able to see how things are challenging for this people group and how they've managed or maybe not managed as well the changes that have been forced upon them since World War II. So lots of compassion there, but also a lot of benefits to living there as well. Pardon my pronunciation, but Robin Musto, Musto asks if I drink coffee or tea or both. Do I have any pets? And do I meditate or do yoga? So I love coffee but I cannot handle it. It makes me super jittery. So for the last several years, I will have a cup of Earl Grey tea in the morning, nothing in it, just straight up tea. And that keeps me going. So I love my tea. I do not have any pets. The short answer to that is we wanna finish having human babies before we add any fur babies into our family. So once we know we're done, then we can talk about having pets. And then do I meditate or do yoga? Um, I don't do yoga. I do enjoy bar classes. How do you explain bar? Bar is spelled as, a, as ballet bar. And basically it's strength training according to kind of ballet ideals. So it's, a, it's about posture. It's about working your core so that you're strong. One of my instructors will always say long and strong, but it's been a wonderful thing for me. It's really helped my core recover. And I also just love being a pretty little dancer again. So don't do yoga, but I absolutely love bar. In terms of meditation, no, I don't meditate. Um, I am a Jesus person, so I love the Bible and I love to pray. The only thing akin to meditation that I might do is something that I've heard called soaking, where you're just relaxing with the Lord and you might have some soothing music on, or there's something called the trauma prayer. I can link that below and also link um, a good soaking artist. But the idea is just to rest in the Lord and take some time to clear your mind and just say, come Holy Spirit and invite his presence to live with us and be with us and to rest with him. In the same way that a child just sometimes needs to be held, sometimes we just need to be held. I had a wonderful friend who would always either hug you until you stopped crying, or he would hug you until you started crying, according to what your heart really needed. And sometimes we're not even aware of what we need until we slow ourselves down and we say, all right, I just need a hug from my dad. I just need Holy Spirit. I just need the presence of God, my creator, to come and be with me. So that's what I would do instead of meditation. It's more about connecting with Father God and again, those resources, Trauma Prayer is phenomenal. I've been listening to that for years. It'll put me to sleep. It will soothe my heart. I'll see if I can find a transcript and link that below. And then other artists are there as well. That brings me to my next question, Miss Ann Tally 7503 She asks about the music in my intro and in my outro. That is a song called Where To by Byrocratic. And that should always be in the video description. That's a track that I found through YouTube in the Creator Studio. And I really like the combination of piano and kind of lo-fi. Broadening that question a little bit, what do I like to listen to? Well, I enjoy some good lo-fi and Lo-Fi Girl is a whole other channel. I can link that below as well. Great background music. Um, I also have been getting it a little bit into wave music. So lo-fi or wave music reminds me a little bit of like the Tron Legacy soundtrack by Daft Punk. Really enjoy that. And then of course, there's all sorts of worship music that I'll pepper throughout my days. So at time of recording, this is the last question I have, and it is from Litza over at Coco's Crochet 6380. Is there something that you've always wanted to crochet and you haven't yet, and why? This one took me a little bit of thinking. I went through my Ravelry stack, my queue, my favorites, and I realized Actually, there's nothing that I really want to do that I haven't in crochet. <laughs> and then I realized, oh wait, I have always wanted to make a knit hat. I wanna do it on circular needles. I wanna do it from the bottom up and I want to do the decreases up into the middle. And why haven't I done it? Cause I just can't be bothered to learn right now. <laughs> uh. I even have the yarn picked out. There's your Japanese influence, the Noro yarn. 
Um, this is Miyabi, which is a wool and cashmere blend. Gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. And I thought this would be perfect for a knit hat. I think I even have the needles up there too. I do know how to knit. I can cast on and I can knit and purl. I think I do those backwards, but I can only do it flat. And why haven't I been bothered to learn? Well, because there's so many crochet projects that I want to do. And the learning curve on those is not as intense as this one is. And so, at least in my mind. So <laughs> until I kind of run out of crojo, I think I'm gonna set the knitting aside, but I know it's there for me to pick up eventually. Maybe, maybe when I have a little bit of breathing space in life, which whenever that can be, right? We're so good at filling up our schedules, but it is there. And Litza, that is my answer to your question, which is not really your question, but that's okay. If you're watching this on the day that I think you are, but I'm actually having a yarny adventure right now, so I'm having to record early. But at time of recording, that's all the questions I have. If I have any others, I will answer them in the comments of this video below. So thank you to everyone who has been so wonderful and encouraging and supportive. Thank you for listening to me ramble. This is a bit of a longer video for me. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun being on YouTube with y'all. It seems so cliche, but I really do enjoy getting to spend time with y'all. It is so refreshing to my heart and my soul to get to connect with y'all over things that I enjoy. And yeah, thank you so much for being my community. Thank you for being my people. And thank you for allowing me to be part of your life. If we have anything in common or if you have any other questions, please feel free to let me know. Y'all are amazing. I thank you for listening this long and hopefully I will see you again soon. Bye.